Tyson was thinking about buying a gym membership. There were only three gyms in the area where he lived. The first one was called Iron Muscles Gym. The second one was called Stronger You Gym. And the third one was called Fit for Life Gym. Now take a look inside all of them. Which one should he choose? You see the clean towels wardrobe inside the Stronger You Gym? They don't look clean at all. It's not the best option unless he loves germs. And take a closer look at the running mill inside the Fit for Life Gym. It's broken. That's an accident waiting to happen. So he should pick the Iron Muscles Gym. Ellie and Ollie were looking for a nice hotel to spend their vacation together with their puppy. After checking out some places online, they brought down their options to three. Take a look at the website of each of them. Which one should they pick? Do you notice the small stock photo sign on the photos of the first hotel's website? That can only mean they are scamming people. Mm. The second hotel seems like a good option since it's a five-star one. But do you see the small sign on the website that says, No pets allowed. Ah. They can't go there with their puppy. So they should stay at the third hotel. James and Jonathan went camping in the woods. As they were searching for the perfect place to set their tents, they came across a river that only had one bridge to cross to the other side. However, as soon as they stepped on it, a troll appeared in front of them and said, I'll only let you pass if you answer my riddle. Until I am measured, I am not known. Yet how you miss me when I have flown. What am I? The answer is time. Hillary was sitting in her hotel room when someone knocked on her door. She opened it and saw a man whom she had never seen before. He said, Oh, I'm sorry. I have made a mistake. I thought this was my room. He then walked back to the elevator. Hillary immediately locked the door after him and called the hotel security. What do you think made her so suspicious? Nobody knocks on their own hotel door, but the man did that. Captain Bluebeard was traveling the sea with his crew. At one time during their voyage, two of his sailors were standing on opposite sides of the ship. One of them was looking west, and the other one was looking east. But at the same time, they could see each other clearly as well. How is that possible? The sailors had their backs against either ends of the ship. Newton and Curie were two history professors from Planet Q. To complete their Planet Earth research, they had to explore a place the Earthlings used to call a school. There, they found a piece of paper with a handwritten number on it, but couldn't come to an agreement about what the number was. Newton was saying it was six, and Curie was saying it was nine. Who was correct? Do you see this teeny tiny dot here? That can only mean the number is nine. So, Curie is right. Yeah. The Foggy Mountains region of the Kingdom of Endolia was occupied by the most vicious dragon. The king called Knight Samuel to go on a quest to defeat it and take all the gold it stole from the people back. Yeah. So, Knight Samuel hopped on his horse and reached the mountains after a long journey. Once the dragon saw him, it said if Knight Samuel knew all three of its riddles correctly, it would leave the mountains as well as all the gold. The first one was, soft and fragile is my skin, I get my growth in mud. I'm dangerous as much as pretty, for if not careful, I draw blood. What am I? It's a thorn. You're a clever one, Knight Samuel, the dragon said. Here's my second riddle. I am a box that holds keys without locks, yet they can unlock your soul. What am I? The answer is a piano. I have only one riddle left for you, but be very careful. If you can't answer it correctly, this kingdom shall be mine. When you went into the woods, you got me. You hated me, yet you wanted to find me. 
You went home with me because you couldn't find me. What was it? The answer is a splinter. Annie forgot her computer in her dorm room, but she urgently needed to use one to submit her school paper. Her mom had a laptop in the study room, but it was password protected. However, she was easily able to figure out the password. How did she do it? Take a closer look at the bookcase inside the room. Some of the books have letters instead of their titles on the side labels. This book has the letter A, this one has N, another N here, there's an I on this book's label, and this one has an E. So the password is Annie. Whoa. Professor Guillermo was the headmaster of the Academy for Superheroes. <gasps> he was also responsible for holding examinations to select new students for the Academy. There were only three students left who successfully made it to the last part of this year's exam. To pass it, they all needed to show Professor Guillermo their special power. The first student's power was going invisible. The second student could make objects fly. And the third student could bend metal with her mind. However, Professor Guillermo realized that one of them was an imposter. Which one is it? Take a closer look at the object that the second student is levitating. Do you see the small on-off button here? That can only mean it's actually some tech device that can fly on its own. So he is the imposter. Jane was competing at Who Wants to Be a Billionaire? And she was only one question away from the billion dollar prize. The question was, it's true, I bring serenity and hang around the stars, but yet I live in misery, you'll find me behind bars. With thieves and villains I consort, in prison I'll be found, but I would never go to court unless there's more than one. What am I? It's the letter S. Dylan was going to buy a new car. The salesman showed him three options. Which one should he choose? Take a look at the side door of the first car. The paint on here is chipped. It's not wise to get a car that's already damaged. Hmm. The third car's left tire rim is cracked. This one is also a pass. Hmm. So he should get the second car. Oh, yeah. Catherine has four daughters and each of her daughters has a brother. How many children in total does Catherine have? Each daughter has the one and the same brother, so she has five kids. Rachel and Ashley were best friends, but one of them was living in Japan, and the other in the United States. Rachel had purchased a BFF bracelet for Ashley and wanted to mail it to her. However, the only way to make sure the bracelet would be received was to place a lock on the package. Rachel had locks and Ashley had locks, but neither had keys for each other's locks. How can they ensure the bracelet isn't stolen? Rachel should place a lock on the package and send it to Ashley. Ashley then should place one of her locks on the package and send it back to Rachel. Rachel removes her lock and sends the package back to Ashley. Marla goes to the grocery store and buys one dozen eggs. As she's going home, all but three eggs break. How many eggs are left unbroken? Stuart works as a teacher in an old British magic school, which is located in a beautiful castle. Early in the morning, he's walking down the corridor. Suddenly, Stuart hears a loud noise from the class and goes there to check. He sees three students raising their wands. One of them is a fake wizard. Can you guess who? This guy, he has an ordinary twig instead of a magic wand. Stuart settles down the quarrel and goes to the dining hall. He chooses one of these four breakfast sets. But Stuart doesn't eat any meat or fish. Also, he's allergic to all the purple fruits and berries. Can you help him choose the safest option?
First of all, let's exclude the first breakfast. This cotton cheese bagel looks good, but it contains salmon. The second set has toast with blueberry jam, which may cause an allergic reaction. As for the fourth option, fried bacon is hiding under this cute waffle. So, Stuart should choose the third option. Although it contains some purple cabbage, nobody said that he's allergic to purple vegetables too. The cook offers Stuart a deal. If you guess my riddle, you'll get a double dessert. Stuart agrees. Here's the riddle. What melts in a freezer? The frost when the freezer is switched off. After breakfast, Stuart goes to the school greenhouse to say hi to Miss Palmer. She looks very confused. In the morning, three evil wizards opened a magical portal and snuck into the greenhouse. They took the shape of my plants, and now I don't know where they are. Can you help Stuart find them? Take a look at this cactus. It has no root. It just floats in the air without a pot. All the lilies have six petals, but this one only has five. And this pumpkin has a watermelon pattern and color. Therefore, these three odd plants should be the wizards. Stuart walks down the great hall. Suddenly, an owl lands on his head and ruins his hairstyling. Stuart gets furious and asks three students standing nearby. Whose owl is this? Can you spot the owner of this bird? It's this guy. He has the same colored accessory as his owl. It's time for the flying lesson. Three students, Wendy, Drake, and Blair, are about to have a race on their broomsticks. Can you spot who's cheating? Blair is casting a spell on her broomstick to make it go faster. Blair gets disqualified. Meanwhile, Drake and Wendy and Rob get ready to start the race. Can you guess who's going to win? Drake has a broken broom, and Rob's position is wrong. It will take him more time to catch the broom and hit the road, so Wendy has the best chance of winning. Stuart begins transfiguration lesson. He gives each of his students an apple and asks them to turn the fruits into stones. And then Stuart goes to the toilet. After a while, he returns and finds a huge toad sitting on his desk. Stuart questions three suspects. Among the students, Drake says, I didn't do it. I was too busy with your task. Luckily, I made it. Bella says, It was Magnus. I saw him catching a toad in the pond last night. And Magnus says, It was Drake. He wanted to distract you because he didn't do his homework. Who's lying? Drake. Take a look at his desk. There's an apple in front of him, but he said that he succeeded in turning it into a stone. Stuart is riding a broom in the garden during his lunch break. Suddenly, someone throws a purple paint tube on his head. Stuart loses balance and falls. He finds three suspects and interrogates them. Billy says, I was just sitting under this ancient oak and doing my homework. Bella says, I was painting Billy's portrait. At some point, I noticed that my purple paint was missing. We both were here all the time. And Lily says, I was just flying on my broom. I didn't even see any paint, sir. Who pranked Stuart? There's purple paint on Bella's hands, but it's okay because she was painting. Billy's outfit looks fine, but Lily has these odd smudges of purple paint on her hair. That's because she hid the tube under her witchy hat after the prank. 
Stuart is visiting the human world once a week because he loves one local bakery. But today, he finds out that he's not the only magical guy here. Can you guess why? Take a look at this pretty lady. She looks young, but her reflection in the mirror shows she's an old witchy lady. Every winter, a fancy ball takes place at the magic school. Several students perform a traditional dance as part of the opening ceremony. Suddenly, one of the dancers, Lily, loses her balance and falls in front of everyone. Stuart decides to investigate this case and finds out that someone had spilled mm. olive oil on the dance floor on purpose. He interrogates three suspects. Harry says, Sir, I didn't do it. Lily is my girlfriend. Why would I prank her so meanly? Richard says, Lily totally deserved that. She refused to go to the ball with me. I don't know who did it, but I'm grateful to this person. And Bella says, Before the performance, I was taking selfies with my boyfriend. Look at the pictures, if you don't believe me. Now Stuart knows exactly who's guilty. What about you? It was Bella. Take a look at her selfies. She's wearing a witch bottle necklace and it's filled with greenish oil. But now it's empty. The magic school hired a photographer to take fancy pictures at the ball. This photo was taken at midnight and this one half an hour later. Can you guess what happened here? This wizard didn't push her. He was actually trying to save her by raising his hands and casting a spell. And he succeeded, as we can see from the second picture. The winter ball is over. Stuart throws an after party for teachers at his apartment. Everything goes well, but the next day, Stuart finds out that someone had stolen the rarest and most expensive spell book from his secret library. Stuart has never told anyone about this room, but the lock isn't broken, which means that the thief knew a special spell to open the door. Only four guests possess this level of magic, Ambrose, Morgana, Rosamond, and Richard. Stuart rushes to the teacher's room. He questions all the suspects. Each teacher claims to have nothing to do with the robbery. Can you guess who's the thief? Ambrose. His coat is missing one gold button because he dropped it at the crime scene. Meanwhile, Ambrose looks through the spell book and finds a potion recipe that allows teleporting anywhere. But unfortunately, the last three ingredients are encoded. Here's a hint to crack the first one. It's a flower that can be found between the nose and the chin. Any idea what it might be? Tulips. Here's the next hint. What kind of vegetable do people look forward to getting every month? Celery. And this clue will lead you to the final ingredient. What kind of room can you eat? Mushroom. Ambrose finishes the potion and teleports to an unknown place. In the evening, Stuart arranges an urgent Zoom call with his fellow wizards. They're all currently in the same city, but they don't have time to meet offline. Unfortunately, their video call gets interrupted by a stranger. Can you spot the imposter? All the wizards live in the same city, which means they're in the same time zone. The call takes place in the evening, 
It should be dark outside, but this guy is in the middle of a sunny day. Therefore, he's the imposter. Stuart goes to the magic market to buy special ingredients for a potion that will help him find the stolen book. One violet costs 10 bronze coins, and the price for one lily is 15 coins. Can you calculate the price of this one star flower? One star flower will cost 20 bronze coins. Each flower costs 2.5 coins per petal. And this particular star flower has a Detective Smith was called to a house to investigate a burglary. Mr. Brook claimed that someone had broken into his place and stolen his expensive watch. When the detective arrived, he saw that the front door was open and there was muddy footprints leading to the living room. He also noticed that there was some mud on the staircase. After looking around the house, Detective Smith quickly figured out who the thief was. He went upstairs and arrested Mr. Brook's son. Why did he do that? The detective noticed that no footprints were leading out of the house, indicating that the thief was still inside. Four friends went out for lunch. Take a look at the image and try to guess which person is the richest. It's the one on the right. The first person has a fake iPhone, so they can't be it. Then the one next to them has ripped shoes, which means she can't afford new ones. The third friend has an empty wallet. She's probably going to ask some friend to pay her part of the bill. And the fourth one has multiple black credit cards, which means they're the richest. Freddy went to the castle near his house to return a lost cat. He was greeted by an old man that invited him in. But once he stepped inside, the old man turned into an evil magician that trapped Freddy inside the castle. Then the evil magician said, If you manage to complete three tasks I give you, I'll let you go home. Otherwise, you'll be stuck here forever. Here's the first task. Help me find my glasses amongst all these vegetables. Can you help Freddy? Here they are, right next to the pumpkin. For the next task, Freddy had to make a potion and the ingredients should be added in the right order. The magician gave Freddy a piece of paper with the recipe written on it. Can you help Freddy make the potion? You got to follow the colors of the cauldrons. So first of all, you need to add curry, so the potion will turn yellow. Then you add some blueberries, and it will turn green. And finally, add some tomatoes to make the potion look brown. Well done, Freddy! Freddy's third task is to find a book in this messy room. Can you do it? It's sitting right here behind the floor lamp. Congrats, you just helped to free Freddy. Tuesday, Sam and Peter went to a restaurant for dinner. After eating, the bill was paid. But Sam and Peter did not pay the bill. Who paid the bill for them? Their friend, Tuesday. I didn't see that one coming. Atlas woke up in the attic of an abandoned house. He tried to find a way out of the house, but all he could do was find a room with three doors. Each door hid a different danger. The windows and floor behind the first door were made entirely of magnifying glass, which meant that the sunlight would probably burn him if he entered. The second door hid a room full of poisonous gases. And behind the third door, there was a hungry lion. What should Atlas do to escape?
he should wait until it's nighttime and use the first door. Sydney told her mom that her gymnastics team would go to a sports camp for the weekend. She asked her mom to help her pack for the trip. Her mother packed everything she thought her daughter would need. When Sydney came back from the weekend, she was telling her mother all about the trip. But somewhere during the conversation, she asked her mother why she hadn't packed a toothbrush. The mother immediately knew Sydney was lying about where they had really been that weekend. How? Because Sydney's mother did pack a toothbrush, but she put it under Sydney's gymnastics clothes. If Sydney had really gone to that camp, she would have used the clothes and found the toothbrush. Kimberly discovered three bags in an old attic along with a note. The note said that there was one million dollars inside one of the bags. It also said that the two other bags were empty. She only had one chance to figure out which bag had the cash. Kim knew that only one of the messages written on the bags was true. On the first bag, it said, the cash is not here. On the second bag, it was written, the cash is not here. The last bag read, the cash is in the second bag. If you were Kimberly, which bag would you choose? You should choose the first bag. If only one of the clues is true, then the money is in the first bag. Becca had just arrived from a two-week trip to Egypt. During her trip, she bought a beautiful emerald and wanted to show it to some of her friends. She decided to throw a party just for her closest friends. The next day, she noticed that the emerald was gone. Becca immediately decided to call a detective to help her find the thief. She showed him some of the pictures she had taken the night before. The detective hmm. took a quick look and already had a pretty good idea of who had done it. Take a look at these pictures. How did the detective find the culprit? Look at that girl wearing a hat. At 1 a.m., her hat is flat. But at 2 a.m., her hat suddenly turned pointy, weirdly imitating the shape of an emerald. It must have been her. It's a rainy evening, and Dylan is driving back home. He passes through a bus stop where three people ask him for a ride. Dylan only has one seat in his car to offer, but he really wants to help all of those people. There's an old lady that looks very cold. There's a doctor who claims he needs to get to the hospital for a quick appointment and a woman that Dylan has a crush on. What's the best arrangement Dylan can make to help everyone? Dylan could lend his car to the doctor so that he could drive the old lady home. Dylan could wait at the bus stop with the girl he has a crush on until the doctor comes back and gives him his car back. Susan found out that her favorite pop band was playing a private concert for VIP clients in a luxurious club. She decided to sneak inside the club through the backyard. But unfortunately, Susan faced a strict guard behind the door. He refused to let her inside without a password. But luckily for her, there was a hint in the guard's t-shirt. The hint was 2 infinity plus B D. Susan deciphered the hint and was allowed in the concert. Can you guess what the password was? It was to infinity and beyond. One afternoon, Nicole found her father, Frank, in the living room, really worried about an anonymous text he had gotten. Frank was a private investigator, and he had just received a message revealing the address of the town's most dangerous criminal, Dirty Jack. He decided to go check the area, even if he didn't know what the criminal looked like. The address turned out to be an old warehouse, and when he busted inside, he found four people sitting at a table playing poker. 
The four people were a carpenter, a truck driver, a mechanic, and a fireman. Without any hesitation or communication, Frank arrested the fireman. How did he know that he was a criminal? The fireman was the only male in the room. The rest of the poker players were women. Bobby and Rachel decided to go grab a cup of coffee. But when their orders arrived, Bobby's coffee came with a fly inside of it. He called the waiter and asked him to change his cup. The waiter brought another cup of coffee. But two seconds later, Bobby called the waiter again and said, Hey, that's the same cup. How did he know? Because Bobby had already put sugar in his coffee, and when he tasted the liquid inside the new cup, it already had sugar. So, riddle me this. Amanda loved cats very much. One day, she visited an acquaintance and met her lovely Persian cat. Amanda asked her acquaintance how old the cat was. Well, in two years, Luna will be twice as old as she was five years ago. Amanda nodded and continued petting the cat. And did you understand how old the animal was? Luna is 12 years old. That's an old kitty. Look at these three friends. They seem to have gotten into a trap. They're hanging upside down in the air with their legs tied. On the ground, under the blonde girl's head, there are several venomous snakes. Under the head of the girl with red hair, a fire is burning. And on the ground, under the guy, there are a couple of scorpions. How can these guys escape? See that black cloud with lightning? It's going to start raining. The rainwater will put out the fire under the girl with red hair. And look, the girl has a knife tucked under her belt. She can cut the rope tying her legs. And when she's on the ground, she can help the other two. Hannah was running a marathon. Right before the finish line, she outran the person who was running in second place. The woman was happy she was going to win. But in a few seconds, she got very disappointed. Why? Hannah was still the second best. She was faster than the second person, not the first. Olivia was a secret agent on a mission. At one point during the mission, she had to get into a room with ancient artifacts. But to enter, she needed to choose between two doors. In front of them, there were two guards. Soon, Olivia realized that one guard always lied and the other always told the truth. One door was safe to open, and the other hit a terrible danger. The secret agent could only ask one guard one question to figure out which door she needed to go through. What question should it be? Olivia should ask, if I asked the other guard which door was safe to open, what would he say? Both guards will point at the door that hides some danger. The lying guard, because he's, well, always lying. And the guard who tells the truth, because that's what the lying guard would tell Olivia. So the woman just needs to open the other door. Liza was working as a teaching assistant at a college. One day, she had to look after a group of students who were writing an exam. Liza knew some of them were going to cheat. And indeed, soon after the exam started, the girl spotted one person who was cheating. Who is it? It's the guy in the back of the classroom. He's got the answers written on his ruler. Can you figure out which of these two watches is real and which is just a toy? The watch on the left is a toy. Look at its minute hand. 
it's too long and won't be able to pass all the way around the watch face. In a small village, there were four people who were suspected of being werewolves. One night, the village held a meeting to decide which of them was the monster. Here is what the suspects look like. This person has long, sharp fingernails and is known for being able to run extremely fast. This person has long, sharp teeth and is known for being able to see in the dark. This person has wild, unkept hair and is known for being able to jump high. And this person has a deep, growling voice and is known for being able to smell things from far away. Can you figure out which of them is the werewolf? Suspect B is the werewolf. The description of long, sharp teeth and being able to see in the dark are both typical characteristics of werewolves in mythology and folklore. While the other suspects have unusual traits as well, they are not necessarily associated with werewolves. Joe has a friend, Lucas, who never answered any questions directly. Once, Joe sent Lucas a message inviting him to join their common friends in a cafe. Lucas's answer was kind of weird. Sorry, no money. J-O-B-I-N-J-O-B. Luckily, Joe knew his friend well enough to understand what he meant. But can you figure it out? Lucas meant he had no money because he was in between jobs. <laughs> Look at this bizarre wedding. What do you think? Why are these people, who are about to get married, wearing black balaclavas? Look, there are cameras on the walls. This couple must be hiding their identities. Three friends went for a walk in a forest. People said a wizard lived there, and he wasn't a kind, friendly person. But our guys didn't believe these rumors. Everyone knows magic doesn't exist. Suddenly, a wall of fire blocked their way. Look at the things the friends have and try to figure out what they can use to put the fire out. They could use this bucket to bring some water from that puddle, but it wouldn't be enough to put out such a large fire. This hose is useless, there's nothing to attach it to. The friend should choose this spade and use soil to put the fire out. You're in a forest. Suddenly, it starts raining. You notice a cave and hide there. But as soon as you get inside, the opening behind you closes. There are three tunnels in front of you, and one of them leads to freedom. But the first tunnel is full of crocodiles that haven't eaten in two years. In the second tunnel, there is a hungry lion that hasn't had any food in two weeks. And the third tunnel leads to a scorching hot desert. Which tunnel should you choose? You should wait until the desert cools down at night and follow the third tunnel. As for crocodiles, yes, these animals can indeed live without food for up to two years. Lions can also survive for two weeks without eating anything. But before you get a chance to leave the cave, you hear some deafening noise. It's a landslide. The tunnels end up blocked, but you now see three other passages. A fire-breathing, wait, is it a dragon? Is guarding the first passage. The second passage is filled with hundreds of poisonous cacti growing there. Their spines are covered with an extremely toxic substance. And in the third tunnel, you can see the red eyes of some very hungry wolves. Which tunnel can lead you to safety? You should choose the tunnel with the cacti. At least they can't move. And if you're careful, you'll be able to walk around the cacti without touching their spines. One morning, Donna came to the office and found a box of chocolates on her desk. There was also a strange note. Hmm, 
Can you help Donna understand who presented her the sweets? Her secret admirer is Ryan. Those are not dates. The number actually means the needed letter in the name of the month. A man told his boss, don't take your planned flight today. I had a dream last night that if you do, it might end badly. Your plane will crash. The boss fired the man. Can you figure out why? The man was a night watchman. He should have been on duty the previous night, not dreaming. Jacob and Mark decided to go on a camping trip. Look at the things they're going to take with them and say what they should leave at home. A small hint, try to think outside the box. Look, a tent, game, rice, lamp. All of these words consist of four letters. But a chair? This word has five letters. The friends should leave it at home. A man went around the world in a ship, and still he was always inside of land. How is it possible? The man was in a spaceship orbiting Earth. Hannah's birthday is on January 23rd, but she always celebrates it in the summer. Why? Hannah lives in the Southern Hemisphere. There, January is one of the hottest months of the year. Hey, nice job! Are you ready to train your brain with the help of these tricky brain teasers? Then let's get started! Look at these ladies and try to figure out who's not very smart. Even though the first woman looks as if she's about to touch a hot iron, the device is actually unplugged, so she won't hurt herself. The second lady, though, is about to touch a heated waffle maker. Oh no! John's parachute hasn't opened, and he's now plunging toward the ground. Does he have higher chances of survival if he falls into a lake or on a haystack? He should try to fall on a haystack. Do you see crocodiles hiding near the shore of the lake? Uh -oh. What do you think is more dangerous in this situation? A bear or a swarm of bees? Look, the bear is about to run after its prey. It won't pay any attention to you. But bees seem to be angry. They'll most likely go after you. Look at these people. Who's most likely to survive? The man hanging over the fire? A woman tied over a barrel filled with toxic liquid? Or this guy swinging over a field of sharp needles? The woman hanging over the barrel with toxic liquid is the one who will survive. Look, there's a hole in the barrel and the liquid is leaking out of it. The woman just needs to wait until the barrel is empty and untie herself. To get out of the locked room, Jeremy had to crack this puzzle. 1 equals 5, 2 equals 15, 3 equals 215, 4 equals 3215, 4 equals 3215, 5 equals… What number is hidden under the question mark? It's 1, 5 equals 1, because 1 equals 5. But the door of the room still didn't open. Apparently, Jeremy had to solve another riddle. He had to arrange four nines in such a way that they were equal to 100. He could use any math symbols. 
How can the guy do it? Jeremy figured out the correct answer pretty fast. 99 plus 9 divided by 9 equals 100. You're crossing a railroad bridge when you spot a train coming toward you. The bridge is built over a lake swarming with crocodiles, so jumping into the water is out of the question. How can you survive in this situation? You're farther away from the shore you came from and won't have enough time to get back to that site. So your only option is to run toward the train really fast and turn left or right when you cross the bridge. Jack is taking part in a challenge. He's reached the final stage, which takes place in a desert. If he succeeds now, he'll win $1 million. There are four pots in front of him. In each of them, there's a key. Jack needs to get any key from any pot. But on top of the first pot, there's a bowl filled with a strong acid. The second pot is covered with a bowl full of venomous spiders. In the bowl placed on the third pot, Jack sees a raging fire. A viper is curled up in the bowl covering the fourth pot. Uh -oh. Jack isn't allowed to drop the bowls or turn them over. Which pot should he choose? The guy should choose the third bowl. He can put the fire out with sand. He's in the desert after all and get the key. David's company develops apps for smartphones. Right now, he's looking for a designer. He's got hundreds of resumes, but he's chosen just three of them. Angela's resume says, I'm 23 years old. I don't have a lot of experience, but I'm a fast learner and have already designed similar applications. Helen wrote in her resume, I'm 26 and have four years of work experience. You should hire me because I've created lots of TikTok stories that have gone viral. And Eric's resume claims he's 28 years old with seven years of work experience. He's designed tons of apps and he's been working for Google since the company was launched. David can only hire one person, but it's okay because one applicant hasn't lied in their resume. Who is it? Eric has just seven years of work experience, but Google was officially launched in 1998. There are no stories on TikTok, meaning Helen couldn't create them. David hired Angela, even though she hasn't been working for a long time. She's honest and has a nice portfolio. Three friends agreed to hang out together on Friday night. One of them, Brian, was tasked with bringing pizza. But the guy was running extremely late. His friends were starving. Strangely, Brian wasn't picking up their calls. But in an hour or so, he sent them a selfie. In the photo, he was standing next to his car. In the following message, he wrote he had run out of gas. He was at a gas station, tanking his car up. But his friends didn't believe Brian's excuses. Why? In the picture, it's clearly seen that the guy has got an electric car. It doesn't need gas. Mark told his wife he was going on a business trip to Canada and asked her to pack his bag for him. It was winter, so his wife packed a pair of very warm socks, a scarf, and a knitted hat for Mark. When Mark came back, he said that his business trip was successful. Then he asked his wife why she hadn't put his toothbrush and toothpaste in his suitcase. The woman immediately understood that her husband was lying about going on a business trip. How did she figure it out? She put his toothbrush and toothpaste under the scarf, hat, and warm socks. If he didn't take them out of his bag, it probably wasn't very cold outside, which means that, most likely, he was not in Canada. One out of nine identical balls is heavier than the others. How can you figure out which one it is after just two weighings? You need to divide all the balls into three groups and weigh two of them. 
That's how you can figure out which group contains the heavy ball. After that, you should pick two balls from the heaviest group. Weigh one against the other, and you'll understand which ball of the three is the heaviest. There was a blackout in the city, but the bus driver still noticed a dog on the road and managed to stop in time and avoid hitting the animal. How did he do this? This accident happened during the day. You have six glasses standing in a row on the table. The first three of them are filled with water and the other three are empty. You need to move just one glass to arrange them in such a way that full and empty glasses alternate. How can you do it? Just pick up glass number two and pour the water into glass number five. You enter a room and see that there's nothing inside but a blackboard on the wall. There are four words written on it. Pin, check, boiling, view. You have to figure out a five-letter word that can be added to each of them to make an existing word or word combination. Have you realized that the necessary word is point? Then you'll get pinpoint, checkpoint, boiling point, and viewpoint. Now, you're in a strange building that looks like a planetarium. There are photos of distant stars on the walls. In the middle, there's a screen with a riddle on it. N-E-U-S-R-N-E-R-R-S-T-H-U-S. Question mark. You have to figure out what is hiding under the question mark. If you've realized that the correct answer is RY, congratulations! The list is made up of the last two letters of the names of the planets of the solar system. In the order from Neptune to Mercury, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Earth, Venus, Mercury. Two daughters and two mothers went out to a cafe. Each of them ate a slice of pizza. But strangely, only three slices were eaten. How come? These ladies are a grandmother, a mother, and a daughter. Two of them are moms, and two are daughters. How about a refreshing brain workout? If you're ready, let's start. A man walked into a room and saw three doors. The first one had a sign which read, To the Swamps. On the second door, there was a note, Lion's Den. The third door didn't have any sign, but the man knew for sure where it led. How? It was the door he had entered through. You return from your lunch break and discover that someone has stolen $50 from your bag. There are four suspects. Mila, Henry, Jackson, and Victoria. When you ask them about the money, Mila replies she hasn't taken it. Henry says he's pretty sure Jackson's got the money. Jackson shouts, no way, Henry's lying. And Victoria claims Mila's telling the truth. Only one of these people isn't lying. Who's taking your money? It's Mila. She, Henry, and Victoria are lying while Jackson's telling the truth. If anyone else had taken your $50, there would be more than one person telling the truth. Several sparrows landed on trees. One bird for one tree. But in this case, one of them didn't have a tree of its own. Then they regrouped with two sparrows sitting on one tree. After this, one tree was left birdless. How many birds and trees were there? There were four sparrows and three trees. Three famous detectives came to a cafe to discuss a tricky case. A waiter came up to them and asked, Does everyone want coffee? The first detective said, I don't know. 
The second detective answered, I don't know. And the third detective said, yeah. Why did he say no? All the detectives wanted to have coffee, but the first two couldn't know if it could be everyone's choice. If the first two detectives hadn't wanted coffee, they'd simply have said no. So when the third detective heard the replies of his colleagues, he figured out that both of them wanted coffee. And since he was also going to have a cup, he said yes. Look at this picture and try to figure out who is an alien in disguise. It's the guy in a yellow shirt. He's eating a banana, but he hasn't peeled it before biting into it. He probably sees this fruit for the first time. You have an equation made of matchsticks. 6 plus 4 equals 4. Move just one matchstick to make it true. You need to take one matchstick from the plus sign and add it to 6 so that it makes 8. Then you'll have 8 minus 4 equals 4. Look at this picture. All these people seem to be very close, but who is the girl's husband? It's the guy on the right. He's the only one to have a wedding band on his finger. The next riddle to check how attentive you are. Who is her husband? It's the guy on the left. Look, here's his photo in the car. He's actually the owner of this vehicle. Can you figure out what's wrong here? Um, these guys seem to be wearing smartwatches. Hey, detective, your next task is to understand where the criminal is hiding. Make sure to pay attention to every detail. The criminal is in house A. The car next to his house is parked in a way that makes it easier for the criminal to drive away as fast as possible. Can you figure out which of these people is in the greatest danger? It's this guy. This large icicle is about to fall right on his head. Is the person in the yellow car driving right or wrong? It's a wrong and very dangerous way of driving. The car is moving very slowly, and to overtake it, the next driver will have to maneuver from the leftmost lane to the right one. It can easily cause an accident. How can you get from 98 to 720 by just adding one letter? Add the letter X between 90 and 8. You'll get 90 times 8 equals 720. A wealthy businessman was traveling by a high-speed train. He had a suitcase full of cash on him. The train was moving through a mountainous area with numerous tunnels. After the train left one of the tunnels, the businessman noticed that his suitcase was missing. There were only four other passengers in the train car. Matthew said he had broken up with his girlfriend and didn't care about anything happening around. Joseph said that he would bought his favorite author's novel at the station and had been engrossed in reading. Zoe said that she hadn't seen anything. Her eyes had been tearing, irritated by the smoke coming from the train. And Ellie claimed she had been napping with her sleeping mask on. So, can you figure out who took the businessman's suitcase?
It was Zoe. Modern high-speed trains are electric and don't produce smoke. You've got a bag filled with oranges. You need to use these oranges to fill up two other bags of the same size. How can you do it? Put one empty bag into the other and fill them with oranges. Detective Marcus and another passerby became witnesses of a car accident. A man, hit by a minivan, was lying on the ground, unconscious. Marcus rushed to the nearest cafe to call an ambulance. When he got back, the passerby told him the man had turned onto his back, but hadn't come to his senses. After looking at the scene for a couple of seconds, the detective said, You better return everything you've taken from this man. Why did he say so? When they saw the man at first, only one button was buttoned on his suit jacket, but now it's already two buttons. The passerby must have opened his jacket to look for the wallet and then buttoned it up incorrectly. Now, imagine you're lost in a forest on a freezing cold winter night. You realize that you have nothing to warm you up. There are three options. To stay where you are and call for help. To keep walking until you get out of the forest. And to go on, but take small breaks, sit on the snow and cover yourself with some branches. What should you choose? If you stay in one place, you'll freeze in no time. Sitting on the snow during short breaks isn't a great idea either. Branches won't warm you up and you may accidentally fall asleep and never wake up again. The only way to survive is to keep walking. Sarah invited her friend Alice, who was studying to become a police officer, to a party. It was organized by Sarah's friend Sean. Sarah was worried that there might be a thief at this party. Throughout the event, Alice was watching the guests attentively. At the end of the party, she told Sarah who the thief was. Have you figured it out too? It's the host, Sean. At the beginning of the party, one of his guests had a watch on his wrist, and this woman had a beautiful necklace. But at the end of the party, the watch is already on Sean's wrist, and the necklace is in that flower pot. See? Austin, a rich businessman, brought very important documents to his office, but he had a meeting and needed to leave for several hours. Austin asked his secretary to be super attentive. His competitors could try to break into his office to look at the documents. When he came back, his secretary told him everything had been quiet. But when the man looked around, he realized someone had been inside his office. The secretary eventually admitted having fallen asleep while Austin was away. How did the businessman understand someone had visited his office? The globe on his desk is now turned in the opposite direction. Look at these people attentively. Who does this dog belong to? The dog's owner is the guy in the middle. He's the only one who isn't trying to pet the animal. 